Welcome to Shawlography Clue 1. We are going to work with all five colors for the first week of instructions. So make sure you get all five colors wound because we're going to dance and figure out how to place our colors for Clue 1 of the Mystery Shawl. Now first, before we learn how to knit and do that cast on tutorial and show all the techniques, rule number one for West Knits Knit Alongs, say yes. Don't stress, okay? If there's something new, I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you wanna add extra colors and you have mohair and extra leftover yarns in your stash, you can throw those in to your five colors. But I'm gonna talk about five colors and show you exactly where to place those. So say yes, don't stress. Rule number two is it's not a race, okay? We're, we're really excited to cast on, but it's not a race. You need to embrace your own pace, all right? So take it easy, experience the mystery at your own pace, and just enjoy everyone else's colors. So let's dive in and figure out how to place your five colors, A, B, C, D, and E. We have five colors for shawlography, and we need to decide which color is A, B, C, D, and E. It doesn't really matter which color is A, B, C, D, and E, okay? <laughs> so you can randomly just put them in an order, and I designed the shawl so the colors dance around, so whenever you see some colors together in one section, you're gonna see them together in different ways in the other sections. But, so it doesn't really matter which color is A, B, C, D, E, but if you want some more guidelines, let's think about color A as a really zesty color pop. So think about color A as the statement. We're gonna start with color A as the first yarn in section one, and this color A also is featured in one of my favorite sections in the shawl. So I really like this gold, and that's gonna be my color A for this palette. This kind of contrasting color palette honestly is going to work really well no matter what your color A is. But think about color A as something really bright and color popping. So I'm going to use that gold. And then next, the most important color is color B. Think about color B as a frame. It's going to frame a lot of the other colors in the beginning, but it's not going to do that the whole time. So just for the beginning of the shawl, color B, we can decide that that's going to be a framing color. I'm gonna choose this dark color because it's really different from everything else. So that's really nice. This could also be color B if you want something really light, but honestly, it doesn't matter. So don't stress out about the color choice, but think about color A as a pop, an accent, uh, an accessory of the colors, like the jewelry, the embellishment of your palette, and think about color B as something that's gonna frame lots of the colors. And so A, B, and the other colors don't matter. So just do those randomly. C, D, and E. They can be in any order. A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, here's another palette. If you have neutrals with a pop, let's do your brightest or your most bold, zesty color as color A. That can look really nice. And then for a framing color, I think that could be nice. Color B could be the darkest color. I think the darkest or the lightest color of your palette is good for color B. That would also work as color B, but I really like dark colors, so color A, your brightest pop. Color B is gonna frame lots of colors only in the beginning. You know, they're always gonna dance around. So don't worry about your color placement too much, but this is a good guideline. Okay, here we have a pop. We have some darks and lights. Let's do color A, that brightest, poppy color. We're going to knit with our favorite color for color A. And color B, maybe this one. I think that's nice because it's so different from everything else. It's really going to contrast. A, B, C, D, E. Those don't really matter. Again, the whole color placement, it doesn't matter so much. So here's another color palette that you might have. You might have lots of different colors. So let's do color A, color pop. Let's do that one because it's so different from everything else. And color B will be a framing color. Oh, this one doesn't matter. So if you have a color palette like this, honestly, just put your colors in a random color order and I promise it's going to look great. A, B, C, D, E. If you have any extra colors from your stash that you think you might want to use in your palette, just set those aside and think of any extra colors as backup dancers. I'm going to show you exactly how to work with five colors. That's what you need to knit the shawl. Anything else, if you're extra adventurous with your color opportunities, 
just set those aside as backup dancers. And if you ever get bored, I'll mention a few sections where some backup dancers might do something fun with your existing palette of five colors. So let's get started and cast on. These are my five colors that I'm gonna show you the cast on tutorial and techniques. Color A is my spicy orange. Color B is the light creamy color. That's gonna frame the other color pops really nicely. Color C, D, and E. Those don't matter so much. So just place the colors in a random order if you're unsure. And I, yeah, it's gonna look great. Now, if you wanna see what those colors look like in the finished Clue 1, you can skip ahead in this video to see the spoiler of all the sections. And that might help you with your color placement. So it's okay to skip ahead to the spoilers and go, ooh, that's where my color B should be, or ooh, my color A would look really nice right there. So skip ahead, otherwise keep watching and we're gonna dive into the cast on tutorial. Using A, cast on three stitches using any cast on method that you like. I'm doing the long tail cast on. Knit those three stitches. After you knit those three stitches, slip them onto the left needle and repeat that twice more. Knit three, slip three onto left needle. Once more, knit three and slip those three onto the left needle. This is called the I-cord tab cast on. After you repeated that twice more, you're going to knit three a final time and then pick up and knit three stitches along the I-cord edge. Here's the I-cord edge. When you pick up three stitches, you can dive into both legs of that I-cord row. As long as you get three stitches along that I-cord, you're gonna be fine. There are six total stitches. Turn to work wrong side. Next row, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches along the I-cord cast on edge. I'm going to start by picking up this stitch closest to my working tail of yarn. And honestly, just get any three strands of yarn along that cast on edge. Get them one at a time. Pick up and knit. And here's one more strand. That is a strand of yarn. So get three strands of yarn. If there's any boo-boos, you can just use this tail of yarn from your cast on and tidy it up later. But we have nine stitches on our needle. Knit the center three stitches and then slip those last three stitches with yarn in front. I'm gonna show that one more time because that pickup was one of the trickiest little parts to start this shawl. One more time, picking up those three cast on stitches, get those strands one at a time. And if you're throwing the yarn in your right hand, just pick up the stitch, get it onto the left needle, wrap the yarn around, get one more strand along that cast on edge. And again, don't be too choosy. Just get any three strands that you can get along that little tail. Knit three, slip the last three with yarn in front. You should have nine total stitches ready to work row one, right side. Knit three, yarn over, knit one, yarn over three times. Two, three, and then slip three with yarn in front. So after you do that yarn over, bring the yarn in front to slip those last three with the yarn in front. Again, if you were holding the yarn in your right hand, after you knit the stitch and do that yarn over, 
you got to bring the yarn in front to slip those last three stitches. You should have 13 total stitches ready to work row two, wrong side. Row two, knit 10. After you knit 10 stitches, slip three with yarn in front. So those are all the techniques for section one. It's really short and simple to give you a little color pop. So work rows one through eight following the written instructions from clue one from that PDF. Work rows one through eight with color A and then you'll be finished with section one. I just finished row six and I have 25 stitches on my needles. Row seven, knit three, knit front back knit into the front and the back of the stitch and then take it off to increase one stitch. If you're doing that with your right hand, knit front back, knit into the front and knit into the back of the stitch and continue to knit to the last three stitches for row seven, then work row eight and you'll be finished with section one. Here is the finished section one. This is a little baby section with color A. After you finish row eight, you can break color A. And don't worry, we're going to use color A again later in a really fun section in clue one, but really small. We're gonna continue with section two using color B. Color B is gonna be that framing color for section two. So choose a color B. It doesn't really matter which color goes where because the colors are all going to dance together. But section two, short row wedges, using B, knit those first three stitches on the right side, slip three to left needle, and repeat that 31 more times. Knit three, slip onto left needle. Knit three and slip onto the left needle. You can just keep repeating that until you count 32 total color B rows. So keep doing that little I chord technique. Knit three slip. Knit three slip until you count 32 color B rows. One, two, three, four, five. You need 32. After repeating those instructions 31 more times, knit three, slip three, knit three, slip three, you should have 32 total color B rows. Row one, right side, knit those three stitches, Pick up and knit 32 stitches along the I-chord edge. When you pick up stitches, you can go through both legs of a stitch 32 times. Dive into the I-chord row and wrap the yarn around to pull it through. I am at the end of picking up those 32 I-chord stitches. Here is the 32nd stitch. If you need to pick up more, you can go into here or here if you accidentally skipped some rows, but you need 32 picked up stitches plus the original three I-chord stitches there. And then slip one with yarn in front. Slip this color A stitch with your yarn in front and turn to work the wrong side. You should have 36 total stitches. Your three I-chord stitches, the 32 picked up stitches, and that one slipped stitch. 36 total stitches. Row two, wrong side, knit two together. The color A and color B stitch together. Knit 31, and then slip three with yarn in front. Knit all the way to the last three stitches. 
When you reach the last three stitches of row two wrong side, slip those last three stitches with the yarn in front. Row three right side, knit three, purl 31. After you purl 31, it should look like this with the last color B stitch on your left needle. Slip two with yarn in front. Slip the last color B stitch and the next color A stitch onto your right needle. Turn to work wrong side. Knit two together. Knit that A and B stitch together. and then knit 31, slip three with yarn in front. I just finished row four. On the right side, we're going to work wedge one with color C. I chose this bright yellow as color C. It doesn't really matter which order your colors are in, so just choose the next color for color C. And row five, right side, knit 33. One, two, three. As you begin this right side row, row five, we can start weaving in our ends as we go. So knit those first three stitches, and then after each stitch, you can wrap the yarn, that tail of yarn, to weave in your ends as you go. Knit one, wrap, So we need to knit 33 total stitches, knit, wrap, and whenever I'm doing this wrap technique, I call this the weaving Steven. Do that wrap for about 10 of, 10 of those stitches, and that's going to weave it in as you knit. Knit, and cross, knit, and cross, and this is about enough. So once you're done doing that weave in Steven, you can just cut and snip that tail of yarn later. So let's keep knitting. We need to knit 33 total stitches. After you knit 33 stitches, you should be right here. There should be two of those B stitches on your left needle. Leave them there. After you knit 33 total stitches, we're going to turn around early. And this is what it looks like on the wrong side for row six, wrong side. You've got two B stitches now on your right needle. Just leave those there. Row six, slip one with yarn in front. Place the yarn on top of the right needle and pull it downward to reveal two strands of yarn on the right needle. Then bring the yarn forward to purl one and place a stitch marker. What we just did was called the German short row. We're stopping our row early and turning around to purl to the last three stitches. When you reach the last three stitches of row six, keep the yarn in front, slip three with yarn in front, and remember that color B is still attached. We're gonna use that later. So from here, for wedge one, from here you can carry colors B and C along the edge while striping colors. Now we're gonna start doing a pattern repeat, row seven. We're going to bring color B, so just drop that color C that you just finished. Just drop it and just bring color B up to knit row seven, knit to the marker. When you reach the marker, you can remove that stitch marker. Turn to work the wrong side. Row eight, wrong side, slip one, with the yarn in front. Place the yarn on top of the right needle 
and then knit one. Place the stitch marker onto the right needle. Knit to last three stitches. I just finished row eight, wrong side, slipping those last three stitches with the yarn in front. Continue to work row nine, right side. We're going to knit three and then purl to the marker for row nine. And I just showed you all of the short row techniques for this pattern repeat. So continue to follow row seven through 12, continuing that pattern repeat. And you're gonna keep repeating that until you have five color C stripes. Here is row nine, purling to the marker. Turn to work the wrong side. We can take away that marker. Row 10, wrong side. We, we want to slip one with yarn in front. So make sure that the yarn is in front before you slip. And then place that yarn on top of the right needle. Knit one. Place a stitch marker onto the right needle and continue to knit to the last three stitches. Here is wedge one, and look how beautiful that is. You have five contrast color stripes with that color C. So once you have five stripes, you just finished two rows of color C. You can break color C, and we'll use that again later. But look how beautiful that is. It's gonna block out really nice to show that short row wedge. Now work row 31, right side, using color B. And again, whenever you use that next color, keep color B attached, just carry it up along the edge, knit to the last color B stitch while closing the short row gaps. So we're going to knit all the stitches until you reach this last color B stitch, stopping right here. So I'm knitting to the last color B stitch, and as I'm doing that, I'm gonna take my broken tail of yarn and do the weave in Steven, because I don't wanna have to weave in all of these ends. So knitting to the last color B stitch while closing the short row gaps. What does that mean? Okay, I reached my stitch marker. You can just take that stitch marker off. Keep knitting. Okay, here's a short row gap. You see that funky little double strand that you achieved when you slipped that stitch? Whenever you reach this little double yarn strand on top of the needle, knit through both legs of that stitch. Okay, this stitch is normal. Just knit one, and here's that weird stitch where there's two legs. So just knit through that. It might feel kind of like a knit two together, but that's treated as one stitch. Do you see how it's coming from one stitch right here? So this is how I close the short row gaps using the German short row technique. Close the gap. Okay, I'm done doing my weave in Steven. I've wrapped my tail enough times. Knit and close this gap. And keep doing that all the way until you reach the last color B stitch. I closed all of the short row gaps, and now I'm at the last color B stitch. Slip two with yarn in front. Slip the color B stitch and the next A stitch onto the right needle. Row 32, wrong side. Knit those two together. The color A and the color B stitch knitted together. Knit 31, and slip the last three stitches with yarn in front. I just knit 31 stitches, and then I slipped those last three stitches with yarn in front. 
as you knit 31 stitches on the wrong side, if you're reaching the end of, the, uh, end of your row and you're like, uh-oh, I have one or two stitches too many, you may have not closed the gaps quite as well on the right side. So don't worry about that. Just sneak in some extra decreases if you have too many stitches and uh, just say yes, don't stress, it's okay. Row 33, right side, knit three, purl 31, After you purl 31, slip two stitches with yarn in front, the last B stitch and the next A stitch. Row 34, wrong side, knit those two together. Knit 31, and then slip the last three with yarn in front. Here's the completed wedge one, and that's looking really beautiful with those German short rows. And as you knit the wedges, we're going to connect them to the live stitches, those color A live stitches. So we just did one wedge. We're going to do nine total wedges that are gonna fan across. So we're done with that color C. Next for wedge two, I recommend using color A, and then color D, E, C, and then again, A, D, E, C. You can work your way through those other colors in any order that you like, but just cycle your way through those contrast colors and always keep color B attached. That's gonna be your main color for section two. Here are the nine wedges completed. So we have nine short row wedges and they're gonna fan out beautifully to show off all those contrast colors. So we have contrast colors, colors C, A, D, E, C, A, D, E, and you just ended with color C for that ninth short row wedge. After wedge nine, next row right side, using B, knit two, slip, slip, knit. We're going to work an I-cord bind off once you have your final color B Pearl bumps right there. So knit two, slip, slip, knit on the right side. Slip those three stitches onto left needle and continue. Knit two, slip, slip, knit. Slip those three stitches. Knit two, slip, slip, knit. We're going to continue that to the last three stitches. So keep binding off until six total stitches remain, until you reach these last three stitches. You'll have three A stitches and three B stitches. I am reaching the last three stitches, working that final slip slip knit, and there should be three color A stitches remaining on your left needle. If you have more than three live stitches of color A, that's okay. Just keep binding off until you only have three stitches remaining. So here's that I-cord bind off. And leave the three stitches from color B on your right needle, and then reverse the order like this. Reverse the order of those A stitches, and we're gonna have the pearl bumps kissing each other. Three stitches on each needle, and let's have the needle tips facing this way. We are going to graft the remaining six stitches together using Kitchener stitch. So break your yarn and place it onto a tapestry needle. So with the needle tips facing towards the right, and I'm looking at the smooth knit stitches from color A, Go into that first stitch purlwise, and then go into the back stitch knitwise. Now we're going to go into the front stitch knitwise and take it off. Go into the next front stitch purlwise, leave it on. Now onto the back needle, go through the first stitch purlwise, 
and take it off. Go through the next stitch knitwise, leave it on. Now the front needle knitwise, take it off. Purlwise, leave it on. The back needle purlwise, take it off, slip that stitch off. And then go through the final stitch on the back needle knitwise, leave it on. And then you can go through the front stitch knitwise and go through the back stitch purlwise. As long as you get that yarn through each stitch, it's fine. So don't worry too much about the knitwise purlwise, but as long as you follow it more or less the same, we can take that tail of yarn and we can whip stitch this tail of yarn into the wrong side of the fabric. So go ahead and secure that tail of yarn. Whenever I whip stitch my yarn tails into the wrong side of the fabric, I go through about 10 stitches or so, and that's enough. Alrighty, and this is our finished section two. So we have those beautiful wedges with an I-cord cast on and an I-cord bind off. Section three, we're going to work slip stitches using a lot of colors. Color C is going to be our main color for section three. So we're going to begin by picking up stitches along the cast on corner, right here, that I-cord cast on corner, and pick up stitches from this corner all the way along the edge with color C until we reach the other corner. So color C is going to be the same color that you used for that wedge one. So we're gonna work with the same color that you see in that stripe for wedge one. Using C with right side facing, pick up and knit three stitches from the corner right here. Here are the two B stitches. We don't wanna pick up here or here. Not one, two, here. Three stitches below those I-cord stitches. So I'm gonna get one, two, and go towards the back to get a third strand of yarn. So I got three stitches from that little I-cord corner right there, and I still see two B stitches above it. So that's the right location. Knit those three picked up stitches Now we're going to pick up and knit three, yarn over 45 times. Okay, pick up and knit three. We're going to go into the, towards the back of those I-cord rows. One, two, and three. As I'm picking up stitches, I'm going through both legs of the I-cord that rolls towards the wrong side. And notice that the first two stitches I picked up were color B stitches. So that's good. One, two, three, and the third stitch I picked up was a matching color C stitch. Now we need to yarn over and repeat. One, two, three, yarn over. All the way along this edge three, yarn over. If you're picking up stitches with knitting and throwing the yarn in your right hand, we have one, two, that third stitch is always going to be that contrast color stitch. And then yarn over, one, two, and three, yarn over, and keep doing that all the way along the edge, picking up and knitting three with a yarn over, yarn over, 
and do that all the way along this edge 45 times until you reach the end, that last contrast color stripe along that edge. I'm reaching the end of that I chord pickup. One, two, three, yarn over. I just did that 45 times along the edge. Now we need to pick up and knit two more stitches, those last two B stitches. That's gonna be the final pick up and knit two at the end of this pickup. One, two. Now you should have 185 total stitches from that corner to this other corner. Turn to work row two, wrong side. Pick up and knit three stitches from the I chord bound off corner. So right here, I'm going to start getting my first stitch that's really close to my live strand of yarn. So I'll pick up and knit a B stitch. And we need to get two more of those here at the corner. Number two, and here's the final one. So just get any three strands of yarn along that I chord bound off corner. So I've got my three stitches picked up and knit, purl front back, purl into the front, and into the back of that next stitch to increase one. I'll do that one more time. Purl into the front and the back of that stitch to increase one. Purl to last three stitches. I am reaching the end of row two, wrong side, purling to the last three stitches, and then slip those last three stitches with yarn in front. Turn to work row three, right side. Keep color C attached. We're gonna use this color and stripe it as the main color throughout this section. And I recommend following my color placement in this section. Some of your colors might blend a little bit more, and some of you might have a more graphic section three but keep color C attached. And row three, we're going to work with color A. So color A is the color you began the shawl with. So use that same color for row three, right side, using A, knit six. Four, five, six, and then slip one with yarn in back slip that stitch, and then knit three. We're going to do that all the way to the last three stitches. Slip with yarn in back, knit three. I'm reaching the last three stitches, and I just slipped one, knit three, and you should have three stitches remaining to slip those three with yarn in front. If you have too many stitches or not enough stitches, just say yes, don't stress, okay? If you're missing a stitch, you can just pick up an extra stitch at the end if you need to knit three but you only see two. So feel free to sneak in an extra stitch, or if you have too many, you can sneak in and knit two together. So it's your shawl, nobody's gonna notice. Sneak in those extra stitches at the end and just do a stitch count check. You should have 189 total stitches after row three. So after row two, we did that little increase. So 189 stitches, rows three and four should still have that same stitch count. Row four, wrong side, knit three, purl three, now we're going to slip that stitch with yarn in front and purl three. So slip one with yarn in front and purl three. These are all of the techniques for this contrast color stripe. So keep following rows three, four. We're gonna repeat those two rows twice more. So keep working with color A, and we're going to work six total rows with color A. 
Once you finish repeating rows three and four, you should have six total rows with color A, and it should look just like this. We were slipping that same, that same color C stitch over and over again. So you should have a solid background and these beautiful vertical lines. So break color A, you're finished with it for now. Take color C, it should still be attached. So we're just gonna bring that color up along the back to work row nine right side. Using C, knit four, knit two together, knit yarn over knit, knit yarn over and knit into that same color C stitch. S2KP. Now we're going to decrease all these stitches together. S2KP. Slip two stitches knitwise. Knit one. Pass those two stitches over to decrease. Now knit yarn over knit. Knit yarn over knit. We're going to repeat that to the last six stitches. S2KP, knit yarn over knit. S2KP, knit yarn over knit. S2KP, slip two stitches knitwise. Knit one stitch and pass those two stitches over. Knit yarn over knit. Knit yarn over and knit into the same stitch. So we're going to get three stitches coming out of that slipped stitch. S2KP. Slip two stitches knitwise. Knit one and pass those two over. It helps if you have pointy needles for this technique. Knit yarn over knit. If you don't have pointy needles, just slip those two stitches onto the tip of your right needle. Knit that next stitch. And when you do the pass, keep all the stitches close to the tip of your needle. And I use my index finger to make sure they don't fall off. Pass those two stitches over. So we're decreasing two and increasing two. We're going to keep repeating that all the way to the last six stitches. Continue to follow rows nine and 10 with color C. And after you finish this beautiful row, look at that, that decrease and the increase. It's going to make these beautiful little eyelets and it's going to expand the slip stitch into those V's. So work rows nine and 10 and then the next time you work your contrast color stripe, we're going to use color D. After you work rows nine and 10 with color C, your work should look like this with those eyelets from the slip stitches. Now we're going to work row 11 using color D. Color D is the same color from wedge three. So whatever color you used for wedge three, we're gonna use that same color D for row 11 and keep color C attached. We're gonna keep that slip stitch V as the main color, keep it attached. Row 11 using D, knit four. And as you start to knit this row, I just knit four stitches. I'm gonna take my tail of yarn that I broke from my previous contrast color and my new tail of yarn, I'm gonna wrap it on top of my working yarn to do the weave in Steven, weave in your ends as you go. Okay, knit four, slip one with yarn in back. Knit three. I'm gonna wrap my yarn tails so I don't have to weave those in later. So knit three, slip one with yarn in back, knit three. These are the same techniques that we did before with our previous color, but now we're slipping this single stitch 
from those decreases and we'll be knitting the three stitches coming from that slip stitch hole. So knit these three. I'm going to do a few more wraps so I don't have to weave in those ends later. Knit three and then slip one with yarn and back. Continue working row 11 and row 12 and keep following the instructions for section 3, working these slip stitch V's and those beautiful contrasting stripes. Here is the finished section 3 with our three contrast colors and that beautiful color C as the main color, making those staggered V's. You should still have 189 stitches on your needle. Section 4 with the right side facing, we're going to work with color B. This is the same color that was the main color in section two. So whatever that main color was in section two, let's use that same color B for section four. If you're feeling brave and adventurous and you're getting really excited, you could use an extra color pop, like a sixth contrast color for section four if you want, but that's totally up to you. So use color B for section four, but if you like to break the rules, you can use a new color to your palette if you wish. Row one, section four, knit five stitches with color B. After you knit five stitches, we're going to knit three. These are the three stitches coming from that slip stitch. Slip those three stitches onto left needle. We're going to do that nine total times. So that was number one. Let's do number two. And slip three. And slip. I'll show that for you English knitters throwing the yarn in your right hand. This is the fourth repeat. Knit three. And slip those three onto the left needle. So always look at the right side. Knit three. Slip three. Keep doing that to make an I-cord tail. Keep doing that until the I-cord is nine rows long. Got one, two, three, four, five, six. I need nine of those. Seven. Once you repeat that knit three, slip three, nine times, you should have nine rows of I-cord and all three stitches should be on your left needle. Once you have nine I-cord rows with the three stitches on your left needle, knit four. One, two, three, and stitch number four should be your next C-stitch. And look at that, we have a little I-cord loop. Section four is the section of trust. This is my favorite section and it's gonna make these funky little I-cord variations. I've never done this technique before, but just trust and yeah, it's gonna be amazing. So repeat from the asterisk to last four stitches. So every time you reach that cluster of three stitches coming from the slip stitch, those are the knit three slip, knit three slip, knit three slip. So keep following those instructions, making these I-cord tails, I-cord loops that are nine stitches long, all the way across the row. I'm making a couple more I-cord loops and I just did that knit three, slip three, nine times. So I'm ready to knit four, one, two, three, and four. And then keep doing that I-cord. Knit three, 
slip three, nine times. So this is what we're getting, these little I chord loops. And just trust, trust and believe, it's gonna be amazing. So if your I chord loops are eight rows long, or 10 or maybe 11 rows long if you get distracted, it's okay, as long as you do that repeat about nine times, and then after you do the knit four, that adds one more row to your I chord. So it's gonna end up being 10 total rows after you do that knit four. That's gonna add a 10th row to your I chord, but it should look like this. You know, don't worry about the exact row count, okay? That's totally fine if it's a little shorter or a little longer, but try to aim and follow the instructions closely and work those loops all the way to the last four stitches. Here is the end of section four. After you do that final knit four, you should be at the last four stitches of your row. Knit one, slip three with yarn in front at the end of row one. Then you can break your yarn, break color B, leaving a tail, and all of those beautiful I chord loops are gonna look like this. Again, don't worry if your I chord loops aren't exactly 10 total rows long. Um, some of mine are 11 rows, but as long as you have the loops, it, it should have this effect. And those I chord loops are coming from the three stitches coming out of that knit yarn over knit from the previous section. And that single knit stitch is coming from that decrease. So all the three I chord stitches should be coming from that slip stitch hole. You should have 45 total I chord loops and you should still have 189 stitches on your needle. If you don't have 189 stitches, then just sneak in some extra stitches at the end and you'll be all ready for the next section. Here is the completed clue one. If you skipped ahead and zoomed ahead to see this spoiler, this can give you a really good example of how to place your colors. We're going to work with several sections for clue one, sections one, two, three, and four, using all of your colors. Color A is for section one, and you're gonna see color A also in section two and three. Color A is gonna have a moment later to shine on its own. So if you have a really bright, bold color or your favorite color in your color palette, use that as color A, and you're gonna see that really beautifully in the beginning, and we're gonna do something really fun later with color A. So I chose this orange for color A. And then color B is gonna be the main color of section two. So for color B, choose a color that frames and contrasts really well with all other four colors in your palette. So I chose the lightest color in my palette for color B. You might wanna choose the darkest color in your palette for color B, but choose something that contrasts and frames all the other colors nicely. Color A, color B. Color C is going to be the main color of section three. That's this beautiful gold for color C. So you could choose another color pop, or honestly just a random color for color C. And colors D and E are a little bit less important for clue one, but they're gonna be more important later in the shawl. All five colors are going to be used quite equally in the shawlography design. So if you don't see much of a color that you really love in clue one, don't worry, because that color is gonna come back later and have a beautiful moment to shine in future clues. So colors A, B, C, D, and E. You can just put those colors in a random order too. So don't stress too much about having the perfect color placement. You could just start with a random color. And I designed the shawl to have a balanced color effect where it doesn't really matter which color goes where. But you could use my guideline of pick a favorite color or your color pop for A. Pick a extra light or extra dark color for color B, and then just do random color C, D, and E. It honestly doesn't really matter. And it's gonna look beautiful no matter what color placement you decide. So invite the mystery aspect into your color choosing process and enjoy sections one, two, three, and four. Look at those fun I chord loops. Where is this gonna go?
Well, that was clue one of shawlography. You did it. Now there's more knitting to do next week. So this week we had a lot of fun new stitch patterns to learn and new shaping techniques. So next week is going to be a little more knitting. Okay, so re reserve some time in your weekly schedule, carve out some knitting time. We're going to knit a little bit more next week and invite more fun textures and stitch patterns into our shawlography fabric. So if you've completed your clue one, you can go ahead and share your progress on Instagram with hashtag shawlography mcal. And there's a link below to share your progress in the Ravelry group. So you can find all the links to share your progress in the description box down below, as well as timestamps. So if you want to rewind and watch certain techniques of this video, you can uh, choose those chapters and watch these at your own pace. So remember, choose colors that make you happy. Just say yes and don't stress. You got to have trust in the mystery knit along process. We're only getting started. If you're missing some colors that you don't see enough, just wait. We're going to have some really spicy moments with all the other colors later. And uh, say yes, don't stress, and remember it's not a race, okay? So we're going to embrace our own pace. If you don't finish every week, just enjoy where you're at in the process. Enjoy your colors. If you're feeling spicy and want to add a sixth color to your palette, it's a West Knits Knit Along. You can totally do that. You're the one knitting it, so have fun, and I'll see you next week.